9. Southern California Urban Species Bird Bath Behavior, March 2024. For several days in March, in Dana Point, California, I observed and filmed nine species of urban birds using a bird bath slash fountain. I was about 20 feet from the fountain. A fixed Nikon P1000 camera on a tripod on manual focus was used to take the video. I was filming through a double pane window, which contributed some degradation of the images. The species observed, there are the nine species, we're going to go through each one of them. Let's start by asking some questions. Why do birds bathe? Why do they put themselves in danger? Bathing increases their risk of predation. There are Cooper's hawks in the neighborhood. Bird specialists. Our bird bath is near vegetation that provides some safety for the birds, but on occasion the hawk is successful. And I got a picture of one of the Cooper's hawks in January of 2021 sitting on the bird bath. The general consensus is that bathing, usually followed by preening, is needed to maintain the health of a bird's feathers. Not only could a bath remove excess oil, but it could reduce parasites. It may ensure that feathers are positioned for the most efficient flight. But apparently there's little experimental information on the subject. Let's look at the bird bath and characteristics and dimensions. This is the view from the camera location of the fountain. A Niger bird feeder out of view is to the right, as well as a hanging hummingbird feeder. Another view showing the solar-powered frame with a rechargeable battery in it that leads to a small recirculating pump below the base of the upright center post, an upper cup that is also used for bathing. Here is a white crowned sparrow peeking out from the edges of the center post. I'm showing you some dimensions. Birds tended to prefer the water, the water side towards the dense vegetation of the shaded side. Made difficult uh, photography because of that. Here's the top view showing the central post that fills with water from the recirculating pump at its base when enough battery power is available and the water then spills over into the main basin. The birds visiting the bird bath apparently are aware of the fluctuating water level of the upper bathing area. Here's a female house finch waiting, patiently I guess, for the water pressure to turn on. She keeps looking. What's going on? Somebody messed up. Didn't turn on the water. Ah, here comes the water. And there she goes. White Crown Sparrow. By far the most use of our bird bath was by a flock of wintering white crowned sparrows. Now I'm going to show you this. There's quite a bit of body movement to facilitate this behavior of, uh, of, bathing, of bathing. And it tends to be stereotype. Song Sparrow. Pacific Coast Highway, with its margin of shrubs, is in close proximity to our house and should provide suitable habitat for the song sparrow. On one day, the assumed same bird used the bird bath on three separate occasions. So I'm going to show you a bathing sequence here. 
of the Song Sparrow. Dark-Eyed Junko In recent years, it's become a year-round breeder in our area. Wyatt has expanded its breeding range into the lowlands of Los Angeles and Orange County is being studied at UCLA. I used to only see the species during the winter, but times have changed. This was the only time I saw the species taking a bath, but it is a frequent visitor to my yard. You notice it doesn't throw up as much uh, water spray as the white crown sparrow does. House finch. One of the more common urban birds at seed feeders, the red of the male comes from pigment acquired from food. Most of the time, the finches feeding on the bird feeder would come down to the bird bath for a quick drink rather than a bath. Later, you will see a female going through a full bath sequence, but it's actually part of another species video. So here's a bathing male. House finch. Again, each species has its own little pattern. Here you can see that there's not much water being thrown into the air. Lesser Goldfinch, another visitor to our Niger bird feeder and the bird bath. I never saw the species actually bathe in the fountain. Individuals did alight on the edge of the bird bath to drink water, however. So first we'll look at a female. And then we'll actually look at two males. Notice how they drink water, like most of the birds visiting the bird bath. The species can't just suck it up at the water surface. Orange crowned warbler, a resident breeder in this area has a wide diet including insect seeds and nectar. It's difficult to see the head feather color that this species is named for, but those colored feathers usually become apparent after the bird takes a bath or raises the feathers. So here's an orange crowned warbler. You generally see it with this smooth greenish cap. You don't see the orange. And then, here's a full video frame. Let's see what a good bath will do to its head feathers. It's joined by two neighbors. One we have discussed, that's the white-crowned sparrow. The other will come later. It's, the other one is real 
uh, scene uh, stealer. I lost the sharp camera focus, as you'll see when I zoomed in on the left side, but the video still illustri illustrates the orangey head feathers. So be patient, that orange crown is going to come back. In fact, it generally did the same pattern each time. It, it bathed late in the afternoon. It, it hid behind the post. Made it difficult to, to do things. Aha! There's the scene stealer. So let's zoom in. You can see the orange feathers there. Throws up quite a bit of water. Is our little friend going to show up again? Yep. See how close he gets? Going to mention something about that. Swinho's white eye. This small bird is native to East China, North Vietnam, the Thai Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, and Borneo. It was introduced throughout Southern California, probably as a result of the pet trade. It feeds on insects, fruit, and nectar. There is a small population in our urban tract. And so here is a picture of it. Like actually against the wall behind the bird bath, forging on the blossom of a pink powder puff. Some individuals uh, may be very flighty, spending a split second on the water surface be before retreating to shelter, then repeating the performance. Show you what that looks like. So here is our white eye. Whoop, gone. And then it would repeat that. On one occasion, a white eye moved closer to a bathing white crowned sparrow. Show you that. So here they are. There's a pair. They come in. One in the top goes back and forth. And a white crowned sparrow comes along. They probably cannot see each other at this point zip point. And once the white, and there comes the other bird on the top, once the white crown starts to bathe, it attracts the attention of one of the white eyes who gets closer to it. Look at it. Is it benefiting? From the bathing of the white crown. And then the, the pair continues to, uh, to bathe. We'll go through the sequence. I think there's some more, right? Incident, a second one involving a bathing house finch where, during more than a second, and I can time it because I'm 
uh, shooting the video at 30 f uh, frames per second, the white eye, I think, landed. I don't think it was hovering. Landed next to the finch, raised its wings a few times. I'll show you that in the next photo. Catching the spray from the finch. So I'm going to show you the photo. Then I'm going to show you uh, this, that snippet. Slow down to 1 16th speed. And then I'm going to show you the full encounter from beginning to end as well. So here, this is a photo, one of the frames, where the white eye was apparently clinging to the post and raising its wings. In fact, the one, one uh, image, it raised just one wing. Now I'm going to slow this down to uh, 1 16th speed. You see the one, one bird leaves. The next one is going to fly in. Here it's flying. I think it's landing on the side of the center post, raises a wing, raises two wings, raises the wings again, and flies out. Very interesting behavior. And now the full segment at uh, real time in fact, I think that that, that white eye tried to land on the post, the, even there. So two different birds, two different ways of bathing. Now, I should mention that if if the white eyes were feeding uh, on the uh, ledge, the the hedge area, and a sparrow was bathing here, it didn't come uh, down to uh, take advantage of that. It seems only when the white eyes were actually bathing that if another species came nearby, that they might move closer to it. Allen's hummingbird. Hummingbirds probably have many opportunities for taking baths, considering their size. From dew in the morning to spray from lawn sprinklers, I had two hummingbird bird bath encounters during the filming, both not very satisfactory from a photography viewpoint. One of them went through a full cleaning uh, sequence, but it was behind the post. I'll show you only one here. And we'll look at this Allen's hummingbird coming in. See the rufous on the bottom. And that was about it. Morning dove. The dove is the largest bird species that regularly uses our bird bath. During the hotter months of the year, groups may come and sit in the fountain. Doves have curled tongues that act like straws so they can suck up water. I don't know if you notice that. The, the other species you have seen have to raise their head with a beak filled with water and then gulp it down. I'm going to show you two sequences. The first one, dove. You notice it, it, it knew that the water was rising, came up to the top. There it is drinking. Doesn't have to raise its head and gulp the water down. And then it's funny that the uh, water level was going to drop. 
the battery has to reach a certain level and the morning dove will attempt to go down farther and farther to get a drink of water. Where did the water go? It'll move around so you get a better view of how deep it's going down. The water level may fluctuate a little bit. It depends on the pressure. So there may actually be water still in that column farther down until eventually we'll, we'll have enough battery power uh, to uh, pump it all the way up. And then uh, this is a full frame. I'll show you a pair of morning doves. Because that's a white crowned sparrow on the right side. This will be the last video that you will see. You can see how high the splashing is from the white crowned sparrow. After the doves bathe, they may spend some time uh, on the edge of the birdbath preening. Here's another new white crown sparrow. And it'll show you how it bathes.
And we'll go through the full sequence. And when they both fly off. So I hope you enjoyed that little video. Nine Southern California urban species bird bath behavior. This has been another of my JDW talks. I have YouTube talks on genealogy topics, census resources, Ellis Island immigration. And then my other hat is natural history topics, virtual birding field trips, birding optics, California birds, and then some miscellaneous YouTube videos, novelty zithers, and biology songs. So the next time, if you have a bird bath in your yard, take, take a look. Spend a little bit more time. And especially if there are the swin hose white eyes uh, in the area, uh, see if uh, the, what, I, what I observed uh, happens again for, these, for that particular species. Bye-bye.